everyone, and welcome back. I wanted to spend a little time on two very common projectile problems that you will come across, and these will give you a better understanding of the topic as well. We're going to do problems involving the half arc and full arc projectiles. Now, just to show you what I'm talking about, this is an example of a full arc. The projectile is considered to start from ground level, rise upward, and return back down, and the problem is over when it returns back to ground level. As you might see already, when dealing with a full arc projectile problem, there's a good amount of symmetry you can make use of, and we're going to do that today. So let's go back here and check out my problem. A projectile is launched at ground level with a velocity of 22 meters a second at an angle of 50 degrees from the ground. What is the height and max range of the projectile? There, there's a few words in here I put in here on purpose that you need to have an understanding of, but I'll get to that in a minute. For now, let's follow the steps that I recommended last time. Step one. Draw the projectile arc. So, starts at ground level, shot into the air, turns back toward the ground. I'm going to hold off on my initial and final points for now, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Step two, break up your initial velocity vector. A projectile is launched at ground level with a velocity of 22 meters a second at an angle of 55 degrees from the ground. Okay, this statement, 50 degrees from the ground, what they mean here is the horizontal. They literally mean the horizontal surface of the ground. So if this is the ground, the vector I'm looking at is this way, 50 degrees above the ground. I'm going to erase this. I will actually I will put in my components. This vector is 22 meters per second. And my components are 14.1 meters per second on the X and 16.9 meters per second on the Y. Now that I've found these components, I'm no longer using this. Okay, next up, and the most important step, I will put in my projectile table. Now it's time to see what can I fill in before I even get to any of these equations at all. This is also a good time to label my initial and final points on my picture here. So your projectile is launched at ground level with a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees from the ground. What is the height and max range of the projectile? First, we're gonna go after the height, which means my initial point is at the ground here. My final point is when the projectile is at its highest point. So I'm gonna label that here. Now I can start listing givens. VIX, we found VIX, 14.1 meters per second. While I'm here, acceleration on the x-axis is zero meters per second squared. If you don't know why I'm doing this, make sure you watch my last video. There are no forces on the x-axis, there are only forces on the y-axis due to the Earth. If acceleration is zero, that means no change in velocity. So VF is 14.1 meters per second. Delta X I don't know, time I don't know. VIY, I have VIY right here. It is 16.9 meters per second. Acceleration on the y axis, I know. It is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because this object is in free fall. I don't know delta y, it's actually what I'm looking for the height. Now, there is one more thing I know, and I left it for last on purpose. Check out my visual example again. Here is a visual example with the x and y velocities. Take a look at the y velocity. It starts out large, gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and at the very top it is zero. So, zero meters per second. This is actually defining the end of my problem. You are literally telling the kinematic relationships that once this velocity hits zero, problem is over. So, let's start filling stuff in. x-axis is no good, because acceleration is zero, and vi and vf are the same here. In other words, none of these equations are useful to me. However, on the y-axis, I have some good information. I have VIY, VFY, any non-zero acceleration. I will start out with this last kinematic equation, delta y equals VFY squared minus VIY squared over 2AY equals zero squared minus 16.9 meters per second. This is squared over two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. These negatives will cancel, and I will get a displacement of 
14.6 meters positive, which is important because I know my displacement is upward. 14.6 meters. Time. I'll use the acceleration equation because it's really easy to rearrange for time. Time equals Vf minus Vi over acceleration, 0 minus 16.9 meters per second over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Negatives cancel, meters cancel, one of these seconds cancel. This second is in the denominator, so it's going to be flipped. And I will get an answer of 1.72 seconds. Last up, delta x. I will use the third kinematic equation. Delta x is vi delta t. And the entire second half cancels because there's no acceleration in the x-axis. So I get 14.1 meters per second times 1.72 seconds gives me 24.3 meters. I'll put that here, 24.3 meters. Okay, so I know I went farther than I needed to for this, but there's a reason for that. There's something I wanna show you. The first question, what is the height? So the height, the highest point it gets to is this, 14.6 meters. That answers the first question. Now let's talk about the second question. But first, I'm going to move a few things around. I'm going to put my drawing down here at the bottom. I'm going to move my table over here. And I'm going to add another table on the right-hand side. Because if we are now going to find the max range of the projectile, we are no longer doing the half arc, which is this. We are doing the full arc. Now, I set it up like this, and I found all of these variables because I want to show you that going from half arc to full arc is really easy. And if you look at our visual one more time, you can see the reason because there is a lot of symmetry here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cross out my final point here and make my final point at the ground. Next up, since my final point has moved, I need to relist my givens, hence this new table. The first thing we're going to do is see what givens actually do not change. For starters, the initial spot has not changed, so my initials are still the same. 14.1 meters a second and 16.9 meters a second. VFX, there's no acceleration on the x-axis, so VFX is 14.1 meters a second still. VFY is no longer zero because we're not at the top of the arc anymore. Acceleration the y is still the same. So these have not changed. Time will be different, delta x will be different, VFI will be different, and delta y will be different. Are any of these we know? Well, there is. If this is launched from ground level, and the final point is at ground level, that means the delta y is zero meters. There is no displacement on the y-axis if it ends up back on the ground. Is there anything else we can get pretty easily? Well, actually there is. There is perfect symmetry here between the left side and the right side. If the initial launch on the y-axis is 16.9 meters a second, it rises up in the air, comes back down, ends up at the exact same position on the y-axis, Therefore, VFY is downward and the same value, negative 16.9 meters per second. Is there anything else I can get pretty easily? Well, yes, there is. If this is perfect symmetry, then the time it takes to go halfway is half the time it takes to go the full way. Therefore, if I take delta T and multiply by 2, I will get 3.44 seconds. Here's my new time. And now for the final question, what is the max range of the projectile? Range means delta x. How far horizontally? It is a term that is used every now and then and is probably good to know. So again, if this is perfect symmetry, the first half of the arc is an exact mirror of the second half of the arc. Therefore, delta x can again be multiplied by 2, which would give me 48.6 meters. This is the full range. So to answer my questions, my max height is here, 14.6 meters above the ground, and the full range when it hits the ground again is 48.6 meters. So a little side note, if you're ever asked this, get the height and the max range, and you know it's gonna be a full arc problem, going from half arc to full arc is a lot easier than doing it in reverse. So I always recommend doing it in this order. Okay, next time I'll get into more advanced projectile problems, but for now, I will end it here. Have a good day. This is Mr. M signing off.